what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Minis Forum Elite Mini TH80 now they're also making a TH60 with a lower powered CPU but the TH80 which we're going to take a look at in this video is their highest end model and when it comes to the design it's definitely a big departure from what we've seen in the past from Minis Forum but I'm kind of digging what they've done here it's definitely given off some Mac Mini vibes but you know we're running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box with this unit we've got a lot of I.O and they've kept it nice and thin. Love the minimalistic look here. We've got our vents on the side, got some I.O. up front, round back we've got a lot of USB and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet with this unit. Plus up front we've got a full function USB Type-C port which will do video out. Overall, really do like the design. Inside of the box they do include a mounting bracket. We've got our power cable, HDMI, and a 90 watt power supply. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a full function USB Type-C port. Like I mentioned, this will do display out. One full-size USB 3.2 port and our audio jack. On each side there's not much going on, but we do have a lot of ventilation here for the CPU. And around back we've got a dedicated audio in and an audio out port. Four more USB 3.2 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size display out, and our power in. So in total, we can do three displays on this unit utilizing that USB Type-C up front, HDMI, and the display port. So the model we're going to be taking a look at in this video is known as the TH80. They also have the TH60 with an i5 CPU. But when it comes to the specs of the TH80, we've got the Intel i7-11800H. 8 cores, 16 threads, we've got a base clock of 2.3 GHz and a turbo of 4.6. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics with 32 execution units, I was really hoping for the 96 version out of this thing. Up to 64 GB of DDR4 at 3200 MHz. The one we're looking at in this video has 16 GB and it is running in dual channel. This little PC supports two NVMe SSDs up to 2 TB, I've got a 512 GB installed in one of the slots right now. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this one happens to be running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. This is not the bare bones model, but you could always install Linux if you want to. I did want to give you a look at the internals here. As you can see, we've got those two M.2 slots, and both of them do support an NVMe SSD. We could add an external GPU to this down the road. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. But to access the RAM, we do have to pull out this cooling fan. Not a huge deal, it's only a couple screws, and I completely understand where they were going with this. They definitely wanted to keep everything compact. And as you can see here, it's actually a nice little clean build. So setup on the PC went off without a hitch, and I do want to mention that this is not touted as a gaming PC, but we're definitely going to be testing out some games and emulation. I know the GPU isn't the most powerful, but the CPU here should put down some really good emulation performance. And lucky for us, this is actually running at 45 watts. There was no tweaking or tuning that I had to do. And I'm surprised at how quiet this thing is running at 45 watts, even at full boat. So I have heard it ramp up one time, and that was just installing the new Intel driver. I'm not exactly sure if it just messed with that fan curve or not. But it's a very quiet little unit, even sitting at 45 watts. Overall, very snappy little setup here, and I figured it would be with that i7 CPU. We've got those 8 cores and 16 threads up to 4.6 gigahertz. so when it comes to using this as your everyday PC, you're not going to have any trouble with web browsing, email checking, document editing, you could even do some 1080p video editing and photo editing on this machine. One thing that would have been really nice to see here is Thunderbolt support. Unfortunately, I did try Thunderbolt GPU out of that USB Type-C up front, but it's not Thunderbolt enabled. It's only USB 3.2. It's full function, but not Thunderbolt. Uh, checking out a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube. We'll go with this demo video here. We'll make sure we've got Stats for Nerds on, and we're at 4K 60. Not bad at all. So with this one here, on the initial load-in, I had two drop frames, but throughout the whole video, it didn't drop anything else. And with these 11th gen Intel CPUs, I've always had really good luck with 4K video playback, even on the lower end ones. Now, it would have been cool to see that 96 execution unit Intel Iris Xe GPU in here. We've only got 32, but it's more than enough for 4K 60 out of this thing. And you know, going into this PC, just checking out the specs and everything like that, I had a great feeling that this was going to be a great little desktop replacement. It's far from a gaming machine, but for everyday use, you'll be good to go. Now, we'll definitely be testing out some gaming and emulation on this little rig just to see what it would do. But the first thing I wanted to show you were a few benchmarks that I ran on this machine. 
Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core of 1570, multi 6657. Definitely not 12th gen or Zen 3 performance, but for an 11th gen Intel, not bad at all. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that built in GPU, 5660. And finally, Night Raid, and we only got a 10,000. So keep in mind, we've got that lower in GPU, but I still want to see what kind of games we can play with this unit. And the first game we have here is the Art of Rally. I'm at 900p high. At 1080 high, I was getting a few dips here and there, a little under uh, 60. So I might have to drop it down to medium if I want to do 1080. But the game still looks great at 900p, and I can get an average of 78 FPS out of this. Moving over to OG Skyrim, 1080p high, and we do get some dips under 60 at high, so taking it down to medium is the way to go. I just ran it like this to see what would happen. I mean, it's so close to running at a constant 60, but I did see some dips down into the 50s. Taking it up a notch to Forza Horizon 5, we're at 720p low settings with resolution scale set to performance. I was hoping we could hit 60 with it, but I only get an average of around 45 FPS. But we do have that resolution scale set to performance, so if you want to play this game on this PC or with the same hardware, I would suggest leaving it at 720p low. We're going to take the resolution scale to balanced and lock it at 30. That way we kind of have a lock on that FPS. And personally, I don't mind playing this at 30, but it would be nice to play this at 60. It is a whole different experience when you're playing this over 30 FPS. And for the last PC game here, I figured I'd go ahead and throw a fighting game in. We've got Street Fighter V 1080p with a low medium mix. And basically I've got textures set to medium and shadows to medium. Everything else is at low, but we're still at 1080p and the game runs great. So obviously it's not a AAA gaming machine given that we have that built-in Iris Xe GPU with only 32 execution units, but this does handle emulation like a champ. Here's PS2 using PCSX2, Gran Turismo 4, using the DirectX 11 backend at 1080p. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're almost maxing out that GPU. And every once in a while, at least with this game here, I do notice a hiccup, but there are easier to emulate games. And with this little setup, you should be able to do a lot of this stuff at 720p. If you're into emulation, you know about the Dolphin emulator and how well it runs on x86 hardware. I'm using the Vulcan back in, we've got a Wii game going, Tatsunoko vs Capcom, and we're at 1440p. So yeah, the Dolphin emulator runs amazing on this hardware, and when it comes down to it, there are a few harder to emulate games like F-Zero, that one might need to be dropped down to 1080, but overall, Wii and GameCube is totally possible on this machine. So is Wii U using the Simu emulator. Vulcan back end, Async shaders, Bayonetta 2, running at full speed. I mean, this is some really good performance given the GPU we have here. And another one I tested was Breath of the Wild. That one there with a 30 FPS lock, you can play it all day long. I also like to take a look at total system power consumption when it comes to these mini PCs. So through all of my testing, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall. Keep in mind, this is what the total system is drawing from the wall, not just the CPU. Idle, 11 watts. A mix of web browsing and 4K video playback, we averaged around 22. And through all of the game testing and emulation, we averaged around 41 watts for gaming. So really not that bad, but it is pulling more power than some of these other mini PCs out there really comes down to this i7-11800H. I really wish Intel would have added that more powerful Iris Xe GPU instead of the 32 execution unit, but I do think that this would be great for people who really aren't into high-end gaming. I mean, you could definitely get Minecraft done on this, you could do some Roblox, as you saw, some indie stuff and older games are going to work, and when it comes to emulation, it does a really great job. But I think the main thing that this would be great for is just a desktop replacement. If you're trying to replace a tower for web browsing and things like that, then something like this could be for you. So if you're interested in learning more, I will leave links in the description to Menace Forum's website so you can check this out. They also have a lower end model, so just keep that in mind if you don't want to spend that much. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the TH80, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.